Hello, good morning, everyone. Welcome to my another lesson about IELTS exam, IELTS B2. And I've shared the link how you can join if you're interested to join. You have to click on this link to join here and talk to me. Remember, guys, that this class always explains the, all the tips and strategies how you can get good score in IELTS exam. In IELTS exam, knowing English is not the important matter, but knowing the techniques, rubrics, and all the bits and bytes information. And not everyone can give you that information, I can guarantee it. Okay. So guys, um, before this class, we had, I had, I should say, another lesson about the IELTS exam. I'm sharing the um, some information from that so that you know uh, what kind of topics is general asked for the IELTS speaking part. So this is one of the topics that came in, I think, a couple of years ago in IELTS exam. And I have just I've just collected it again, guys. Okay, so let's move on, guys. I'm going to share a video before that. It's about how lexical research or book up can help you. So you've decided to take the IELTS exam. Great choice. It's the test that opens doors around the world. Here we look at the criteria of lexical resource. This is one of four criteria on which you will be tested. Look for the other three criteria in other videos. Lexical resource focuses on the range of vocabulary a candidate uses. The wider the range, the better you will score. You will need to understand these factors to score well on the test. The ability to use vocabulary effectively, including the right collocation, that is, words naturally used together. For instance, lions roar, lions do not shout. Alternatively, we make a phone call, we do not do a phone call. An awareness of connotation, this refers to the positive, neutral, or negative association some words have. For example, Laid back, positive. Inactive, neutral. Lazy, negative. Slim, thin, skinny. The use of less common vocabulary or expressions. Many candidates memorize impressive lists of vocabulary, but often end up using them in the wrong way because they haven't understood them properly. To improve your vocabulary, we recommend these steps. Always try to learn new vocabulary when reading in English. Look out for new words. 
Seeing words in their context helps you learn the meaning, usage, and complication. Online newspapers are a good resource. These can also help you keep up on the vocabulary of current affairs. Group new vocabulary into related subjects and learn these together, rather than making long lists of unrelated words. For example, make a list of words about sports. Using mind maps often helps with this. Learn more synonyms. These are words or expressions which have a similar meaning. Knowledge of synonyms will help with all parts of the IELTS test. Try using a thesaurus. Make small word cards with the word written on one side of the card and the translation and an example sentence on the other side. You can then test yourself. Practice is the key. Not to memorize, but to practice discussing different topics, weaving in the vocabulary you have learned. Research shows practice improves test scores. Don't give up if you can't find the right word. Keep trying to explain what you mean, even if it takes a little longer. This is called paraphrasing. You will get credit for this. IELTS speaking tests include general everyday topics. Specialist knowledge isn't expected. The topics are relevant to all of the 135 countries in which IELTS is used. Mm -hmm. For more information, please see the other speaking test videos, fluency and coherence, grammatical range and accuracy, and pronunciation. Okay, guys. So, um, that is speaking fluency and coherence. Next one is grammar. Where is grammar gone? Mm. Speaking grammar. Okay. So, you've decided to take the IELTS exam. Good for you. It's the test for study, work, and life. The IELTS speaking test is divided into three sections. Part one is an introduction and general questions. Part two is the long turn. And part three is an analytical discussion. Here we look at the criteria of grammatical range and accuracy. Look for the other three criteria in other videos. This criteria focuses on the range and accuracy of the test taker's grammar while speaking. Look for our accompanying downloads for examples of the range of grammatical structure. The range of grammar includes using a variety of complex structures. These are sentences with multiple bits of information. Contrast that to separate simple sentences with a single piece of information. For example, just beside the station was a stadium which was built in the 19th century and where games are now held every weekend. It isn't expected that candidates are 100% accurate. However, control is important. The band seven definition for grammatical range and accuracy says frequently produces error-free sentences, though some grammatical mistakes persist. It's not just the number of grammatical mistakes, but also how seriously these mistakes block communication. To improve your grammar, take these steps. Be prepared. Make sure that you know the speaking test format and what type of questions to expect in each section. Many tasks in part two of the IELTS speaking test relate to the past, so you most likely use past tenses 
Ensure you know the past tenses of common verbs. Some questions in part three ask you to speculate about the future. So use the right tenses in the answers to reflect this. Look out for the British Council's Johnny Grammar apps and videos that can help explain the commonly used tenses for you. Practice. Particularly think about the tenses you use. Ensure these relate to the questions. If the question asked is, what did you do at work today? The main word here is did, which is in the past tense. So your answer should be in the past tense too. For example, today I wrote a business brief. Don't worry if you realize you've made a mistake. It's okay to correct yourself. Record yourself speaking and listen to identify errors. IELTS results range from band scores of 1 to 9. However, there are not specific questions for different band scores and there can't be as the score isn't assigned until the end of the speaking test. Mm -hmm. Also, remember there are no quotas for IELTS band scores. Each individual is scored on their own merits. For more information, please see the other speaking test videos, fluency and coherence, lexical resource and accuracy, and pronunciation. Okay, guys, so that is the end of the speaking part and drama. Next is um, pronunciation. So, you've decided to take the IELTS exam. Well done. It's the test that's recognized and respected around the world. Here, we will look at the criteria of pronunciation. This is one of four criteria on which you will be tested. Look for the other three criteria in other videos. This criteria focuses on the accuracy and variety of pronunciation features, which include individual sounds, the spelling of a word can sometimes confuse this. For example, euphemism. Word stress. Stressing the wrong syllable in a word is a frequent error. For instance, it should be mistake, democracy. Word stress can be confusing when it changes with different parts of a word family. For instance, photograph, photography, photographic. Sentence stress. For instance, the way that some words in a sentence are emphasized or slightly louder. For example, if I were you, I'd go by bus. Intonation. The pitch of your voice changing as you talk. Monotone intonation is typical of someone who has memorized long responses. This may result in lower test scores. Chunking. Talking in a rhythm which delivers chunks of words with short silences in between. Good public speakers often use this skill. To improve your pronunciation, we recommend these steps. The first step is to find out how English intonation, sentence stress, and rhythm differ from your native language. Ensure you understand the effect of sentence stress and intonation on meaning. Then practice using these in different ways. Refer to a dictionary to confirm the correct word stress if you are unsure. Listening to a variety of authentic English sources will help you become familiar with a range of pronunciation features. For instance, listen to the BBC radio or the Voice of America in whatever subjects interest you. Even if you're not listening closely, Having the radio or television on in the background can help attune you to the rhythm and intonation of another language. Don't rush when you speak. That's a common mistake. You might skip sounds or words. It's better to speak clearly. 
Recording yourself can be very useful. Try to apply what you've learned about the different features of pronunciation in English. Chunking is a particular skill you can develop by recording yourself. The face-to-face -face nature of the IELTS speaking test encourages you to develop the skills you will need to interact successfully with English speakers. For more information, please see the other speaking test videos, Fluency and Coherence, Lexical Resource, and Grammatical Range and Accuracy. Okay, that is the bit of speaking. Great. Um, hang on a second. Where is this speaking? So, as you might be aware, there are three parts in speaking task one, task two, and task three. Uh, task one is uh, more or less easy for all the candidates. And task two is, uh, as you know, um, it's a cue card where you have to demonstrate your speaking at least for two minutes or more with the related topic. And bear in mind that it's very important for you to know all the person bias information. Okay, I'll go to a little variation in a moment. So, say, for example, this is the topic describe a house or an apartment. You'd like to leave it. So you should say what it is. Uh, remember, when you start discussing a topic, instead of going straight to the topic, you can bring an introductory, you can bring an introductory sentence or a sentence that you the general idea about the topic. Okay, so because it is related to house, you can say that a house is a place where we live, where we stay, where we share our happiness, sadness, memories, and good time with the family. You can start like this. And amazingly, our learners are so talented, sometimes they start the topic in a different ways.
Okay, so once again, guys, if you remember when I explained earlier that we should use compound sentence, and I was explaining earlier how to create compound sentence. And simple sentence is the first instant for writing sentences. And generally, it is one subject and one verb in the simple sentence. It could be positive, it could be negative, or it could be an interrogative. And compound sentence is uh, two subjects minimum, and two verbs and other words. It could be more than two, guys. So it's a good practice for you In a second. It's a good practice for you so that you uh, know how to make these sentences correctly. Well, now the challenging part is that very often many of our learners are not aware how to make sentences and whether they're correct or not. In that case, um, I've got a uh, you know, writing checking service only for our monthly subscribers. So I'll suggest you to all monthly subscribers that you can always get your topics checked by me, okay? Uh, one moment, guys. I'm trying to All right. So practicing with the topic is another amazing ways to develop your speaking. It is really a crucial factor being an English learner. We focus on our weak sides. And honestly speaking, this is one of my strategies to find out your problem first before we discuss for the solutions. Because as long as, as you know the problems, you have the chance to focus on developing it and find out the solutions. So, in order to find out, I always uh, conduct a small or mini test, either speaking or reading, so that I understand 
from where we need to start uh, moving forward. This is one of the topics, guys. Um, speaking test two and three. <clears throat> As I've explained earlier, so I'm not going to repeat. Now, <clears throat> so Okay, and task, speaking task three, uh, <clears throat> we try to share these things. Okay, and when is the matter of analytical answers? <clears throat> Sorry, we go for reasons, effects, comparisons, supporting examples, personal experience. Singular, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, this is very important to understand. <clears throat> Excuse me, what, what are reasons? What do you understand by the word reasons? Say, and uh, in the previous video, they explained one topic that my nephew watches television nowadays. And the reason why he watches television. Number one, there are many television channels. That's one reason. Number two, children programs are there. Number three, my nephew likes watching it. Number four, because he likes watching it, he stays in front of the TV all day and he doesn't want to study. This is one of the uh, you know, statements uh, was made earlier from the video that we saw. And effects, what happens when they're watching TV? Number one, he's not going to study more. Number two, is spending much time for playing. Number three, obesity. This is a common and major problems in many uh, Western countries. Uh, then compare what you can do to, uh, to reduce the watching for television. Yep, to make his studies more uh, interesting so that he pays attention to his studies rather than television. And we give examples. That's the example has been given my nephew. Personal experience. Uh, example, personal experience, they are almost from the similar category.
Okay. Now, <clears throat> I think we need to see the video one more time. And they've used a word called signposting. So signposting is the technique how you can describe the different uh, related information about the topic uh, it is really uh, a part of your speaking session that you follow the sign busting techniques. For your uh, explanation of the speaking part, that's three. Okay, so why do you answer we compare and contrast? Okay, and this part is mostly, uh, you know, interactive session with the students because no one is joining. So I'm going to um, change it to different topic. Bear me a moment, please, guys. Um, writing topic. Academic writing. Okay.
so uh, writing technique and how can you get ben 9 and writing parts as you met by and as uh, both academy in general uh, there are two tasks task task 1 and task 2 uh, depending on the what kind of uh, IELTS exam you are after, you have to just go for it. Task one in IELTS exam uh, academic test explains uh, writing from the um, from the bar chart or the graph chart or the process diagram. First, you need to understand the whole parts of the task, what they ask. And that is very important because if you don't respond to our address, address all the different parts of task one. You can't hope to get good banding score. So the presence of fully developed position in answer to the question with relevant, fully extended and well supported. Coherence equations. Use question is such a that it attracts no in attention. Okay. skillfully manages paragraphing, lexical resources, band nine, use a wide range of vocab with very natural and sophisticated control of lexical features, rare minor errors, only as sleeps, grammatical range and accuracy, use wide range of structures with full flexibility and accuracy, Rare manners only sleep. Remember that we got to be careful about the spelling technique. This is the first and foremost important before we practice our writing spelling techniques. Okay, as you must be aware that American spelling technique and British spelling technique uh, in IELTS exam do not mix up them in the same topic, uh, which means that you were allowed to go either the British spelling technique or the American spelling technique, a uh, spelling technique, sorry, not speaking technique. Um, it is important to be aware that you do not mix them up. So, which means that you have started writing a topic and you have used a uh, British spelling technique, but suddenly you have written center with C and T R E. For example, lug, then uh, you know, these good techniques doesn't mean only spelling, it means a lot of things. It means uh, you have to practice writing because through this one hour lesson, it is not enough. You can't just hope to develop by studying an hour. So what do you have to do? write every day about your choosing topic so that other people can watch your writing understand your speaking
and the second part would be after spelling is to know the other rubrics and for all the writing we divide the writing into three main parts one of them is introduction second one is body third one is conclusion okay and this is a real opportunity to describe this type of writing So this is a topic female school leavers going into higher education in 1980. So I've just given a sample explanation introduction. So we introduce the main topic by rephrasing or paraphrasing or restatement. And we do that by explaining it law. Uh, remember, it's very important in, uh, in academic writing or formal writing. Uh, you know, the that you paraphrase it or explain it, and we use passive voice or passive sentence. And I hope to describe passive sentence in our next class. We do not use a direct like this, I'm going to explain or I will explain. We write like this, this bar chart explains or it will be described or the bar chart depicts. Uh, you can simply say this chart explains. Okay, this just explains or shows, you can say, or illustrates or describes, indicates. You have to use any of them. Remember, it depends on how you like to choose and what kind of word. Okay, your description is very important. Okay, then we go to the introduction part. And from the above chart, this chart explains the comparison of female, comparison of female students going for high studies in the five major countries like UK, USA, Australia, South Korea, and France. Let, let me show you the graph. You can see in one side it says the percentage on the left. This is uh, y axis. And the x axis, there's blue and yellow color. And these colors have two different indications. Blue is indicating for uh, the years, whereas yellow is indicating for the years 2015, blue is 1980. So, difference between 35 years from this chart. And you can see from the percentage wise how they are changing. We, but do you write every details when you're writing? No, we don't. We write the major sec significant. S 
significant trends. Okay. All right, so this is uh, my writing disclaimer. Your writing may be different. This chart explains the comparison of female students going for higher studies in the five major countries like UK, like the UK, USA, Australia, and South Korea. South Korea and France, sorry, there's France as well. Now, this is the introductory part. We have to bring another, hang on a second. And again, um, I was explaining where it the uh, okay body part. I remember when we were explaining in its IELTS academic writing task one, we must use the data what we given in the bar chart or the paragraph or the whatever the chart is and. Hey, Harvey. Hello, Harvey. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. You can hear me too. Yes, Thank teacher. You. Yes, uh, today, uh, my my and that. Are you there, Harvey? Oh, what happened? Harvey. I think you may have connection issue. Harvey, if you're listening to me. Hi, uh, can you, can you hear me? Yes, welcome I... back. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Welcome back. Okay, so uh, only uh, a few minutes are uh, left. Yeah, I believe that you were very busy today. No, not busy. My VPN doesn't work. All right. Tell me VPN. how. VPN. Yeah, tell me how are you doing today? We have got only five more minutes. Yes, it's very bad because I I I didn't attend your class or on time because um when I try to uh, fix it but uh, I cannot do that so I'm trying to uh, contact the carrier or uh, telecom to solve the problem but uh, until now on I can end into collected network collected VPN then I can 
enter into the hello mm -hmm. TV, then I can enter into your class. That's all. Okay. So it's very bad. Yes, I understand. That's okay. No problem. So what do you like to talk about today? Uh, only on talk about today. I, I, I will follow your instruction. So maybe you can uh, talk something. Yes, you can. Uh, you can instruct me. Sure. Tell me how was your day? Um, sorry. You've got a call. Today, uh, uh, it's very bad. It's very bad because of our uh, network disconnection. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm, it gives rise to our uh, cannot uh, attend the cl teacher's class mm -hmm. on time. I lost uh, plenty of time. I understand. Um, to fix the uh, network. That's all. Thank you. That's great. We have three minutes now. Yes. Oh, the carrier are uh, frequently uh, disturbed me. <laughs> They're calling you because very you're... Bad. it's very bad. It's too late. Too no, late. no, 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 it's no, it's take the phone call. It might be urgent. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. No, I don't. Okay, no. I have a. Uh... Refuse the call because I don't want to talk to uh, them. They should uh, uh, should have um, fixed the letter work or where back, mm -hmm. not right now. That's right. All right. So tell me your daily life. What did you do from morning daily up life? to now? From morning up to now, yes. what did you do? What have you done? From morning to afternoon, yes, I will uh, report to you, and one by one. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, today uh, is very uh, important festival uh, in China, uh, Middle Autumn Festival. What's the name? Middle Autumn. Can you please write in the comment yes. section? Oh, uh, my pronunciation is uh, receiving. Uh, can you please write it so I understand it clearly? Mito. Mito. Mito uh, Autumn Festival. Mid Autumn. I see. Mid Autumn. Mid Autumn. Mid Autumn Festival. Did you hear about that? Uh, I know this mid autumn, but I don't know what is the festival. Can you please explain how do you celebrate it? Oh, just uh, stay uh, with the family and uh, prepare for some uh, snacks and uh, eating the mm -hmm. moon cake. Do you know moon cake? Mm -hmm. Moon cake. Uh, yes, enjoy the uh, happy moment with the family, yes, with the parents and the um, and the kids like that. Yeah, this is a big family reunion. Okay. Uh, it's very important in our Chinese um conversion or uh, conversional uh festival. Okay. Yes, and, like that. Uh, uh, what do you eat in this festival? What kind of food do you eat in this festival? Food, food or um, just uh, buy some um, uh, not fast, not not fast food. Yeah, in this are uh, mm -hmm. in this are uh, event because just the people uh, they cook uh, the um, this food need to um. For uh, need to uh, prepare for a long time. For example, uh, because as you learn uh, in Chinese, our uh, food cuisine, uh, um, it's very complicated. Yeah, from uh, east to south, uh, um, 
from the north or south, yeah, completely different. Sometimes, yeah, the people like the chini. Okay, so I've got only six seconds more. Thank you very much, <laughs> Harvey. <laughs> uh, I'll speak to you later. Okay, take care and bye. Yeah. Bye.